number six in the 42 ideas on leadership is the discipline of teams. This is an article written by John Katzenbach and Douglas Smith. It's written for the Harvard Business Review in March, April edition in 1993. Now, one of the key elements of this article is that teams and good performance are inextricably linked. You can't have one without the other. So let's start from there. It's about good performance. The next thing then is when we're talking about the values of a team, there are five values. First value is that they encourage listening. The next one is that they respond constructively to each other's suggestions, that they give the benefit of the doubt if there's a problem between members, they, they provide support to each other, and that they recognize each other's interests and the achievements of the group. This brings us then to the definition of what the team is. So the team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, a set of performance goals, and an approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. We're going to look at four of these areas now. So the first area then is the characteristics of this group. It should be 2 to 25 people, relatively small. This makes it easier to meet in terms of finding space for the meeting and in terms of finding a time that suits everybody. This avoids the crowd or the herd behaviours. This means that instead of having a group think, that you actually have an intense sharing of viewpoints. It's very important when thinking about this team to have the right mix of skills, technical or functional problem-solving, decision-making skills, and that the people can work together in terms of interpersonal, interpersonal skills. And when we look at skills, we have to remember that not only are we talking about actual skill levels that they have at present, but the potential skills that they could develop in future. We also then have to think about the, t the role assignment or what roles are being given to different people and to make sure that everyone does equivalent amounts of real work. This does not mean that everybody does the same work, but that everybody does equivalent amounts and that it's real work, not simply something to keep people busy. Next area then is common commitment. The common commitment means that they have to have a purpose that they believe in. It means that they need to work to share a meaningful purpose. First of all, they might be given a broad direction from outside the group, but later on they have a certain amount of freedom and flexibility to develop a more specific vision for themselves. And then they're allowed to have time and effort spent creating this specific vision and these particular goals for their team. When it comes to these specific goals, there's a few things we have to think about. The goals have to be linked to the purpose, directly linked. They have to build on each other, and remembering the SMART goals, they have to be specific and measurable. They also have to be specific to the team and not just the organization as a whole. As a result of these specific measurable goals that build on each other and are specific to the team, it is possible to facilitate clear communication and as a result we have constructive conflict. Not just conflict for conflict's sake, but constructive conflict, which is, as you can remember, we need good interpersonal skills to make this possible. This purpose and these goals helps to maintain focus for the group. It also has a levelling effect. The idea of the levelling effect is that even if you're the manager officially, that everybody is involved in achieving these goals, so therefore we're all equal in achieving that. By having specific goals, it's also possible then to have small wins along the way. And that means we can celebrate those small wins to keep our motivation high. And we need strong symbols of achievement to reward us for achieving along the way and at the end of the, all those goals. The fourth area is accountability. Now, accountability is connected to the fact that we have a social contract among ourselves. Instead of saying that we're responsible for doing this because we've been told to by the boss, we have this mutual accountability among ourselves as a team. And that comes as a result of our commitment and trust with each other. And if we have this common purpose and goals, then this mutual accountability is going to happen naturally because we're all working towards the same goal that we're all committed to. So remembering then these things and adding the eight ideas that we're going to look at here now, we have establishing urgency, which means demanding performance standards and direction. This is connected to the goals. We have to select members for their skill and skill potential, not their personality. We need to then pay particular attention that at first meeting and the actions when we set things up, because this will help in terms of creating a dynamic um, atmosphere in the group and also towards establishing the purpose for that group. 
We then have to establish some clear rules of behavior so the team works well together. We have to start thinking about initial tasks and goals that we can try and get early wins on. We have to try and bring new information regularly to the group to keep us pushing and looking for new motivation. Uh, we have to spend time together. Uh, you can't avoid that. Uh, if we're going to be creating a team, we need to spend time together. And finally, we also need to then think about positive feedback, recognition and reward. Remembering we need symbols of achievement when we do achieve things. So remembering that definition. Team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, a set of performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. According to Katzenbach and Smith, then, the sum of the parts is much greater than the parts individually. This is number six in the 42 Ideas in Leadership, The Discipline of Teams by Katzenbach and Smith. It was written in the Harvard Business Review in 1993.